Welcome everyone to another Monday night Bible study. So glad you're here with us at New Life Church. Welcome to our internet audience as well. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're going to be in uh, Judges chapter 15. And uh, how many of you remember what we learned about Samson last week? What, what, how could you des would you describe Samson? Was he someone who had a lot of ability? Yeah, he was a very gifted individual, right? Yeah. Very strong. He was also clever, too. A lot of people yeah. underestimate him in that. And he had a destiny. God had a call on his life. Did Samson choose to live for God? Yeah. No. Oh, I don't remember. I Samson remember. was oh. someone who did what he wanted to do, not what God wanted oh. to do. Does that mean he's going to be able to get out of fulfilling his plan, the, the plan that God has for him? Is he going to be able to get out of that just because he's doing his own thing? No, God's plan for his life is going to happen. Remember what we, we said, what, is, what can we affect? God knows what our, what our life's going to be, what our destiny is. But we can affect the quality of that life by being obedient to God. Amen. God has an end game where we're going to reach. Yeah, that's true. But you can choose whether it's a path that's walked in fellowship with God or a path where you've made your own problems every step of the way and you've made your life miserable. That's what we can choose. Samson all too often chooses to do his own thing and it doesn't work for him. It always backfires. He decided to marry a daughter of the Philistines. That's a big no-no in the, in the law. Just like today, are we supposed to marry someone that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Savior? No. No, the Bible says no. And I'm going to tell you something. In the vast majority of marriages where people say, well, I don't care what the Bible says, I'm going to do it anyways, it usually ends up with a lot of pain. Every now and there, then there's someone who comes to know Christ for that marriage. That's the exception, not the rule. That's like winning the lottery. Just because one in every million people wins the lottery, that doesn't mean you should invest your life savings in the lottery, does yeah, it? That's true. No. It's the same thing. Just because every now and then, someone does get saved through a, a marriage that is between a Christian and a lost person, just because it happens every now and then, that doesn't mean that, oh, that means it's okay for me to do that. No, that just means God can still work in bad circumstances. Yeah, that's true. God can still take a negative and turn it into a positive. Praise God. That's true. And we see that with Samson. He goes to marry this woman. Now, she's not going to turn her life over to God, but Samson is not doing what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to be a judge. He's supposed to be raising up Israel to fight against the Philistines. Instead, he's partying and having fun. So God uses this improper marriage to get Samson to fight against the Philistines, doesn't he? Yeah. And we're going to see time and time again, Samson doesn't want to do what he's supposed to do, but God will still work things out to where Samson will do his job, whether he likes it or not. And we saw, what did he do? And we remember his wife, was, her family was threatened. Her friend said to her, because Samson gave this riddle, and no one could guess it, and they were going to have to pay up. So they threatened him to burn this woman's family alive if she didn't get Samson to reveal the riddle. Samson was so upset, what did he do? After he uh, killed a bunch of people and stole their garments to pay up so after, after he did this, what did Samson do to his wife? Ignored her, went back home to his parents. Ignored her, he ditched her. Just went back to his parents, left her behind. And we saw at the end, Samson's wife, because uh, her family thought that he had let her go, that he was done with her, they gave her to another man to marry. So that's where we pick up in uh, Judges chapter 15, verse 1. After a while, in the time of wheat harvest, it happened that Samson visited his wife of a young goat. And he said, let me go into my wife, into her room. But her father would not permit him to go in. 
Her father said, I really thought that you thoroughly hated her. Therefore, I've ge I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister better than she? Please take her instead. So, now they don't want to cross Samson, do they? They don't want to cross him. He, he's a strong guy. Instead, yeah. she's already married to your companion. How about you marry our other daughter instead? How about you marry our younger daughter instead? Samson's response, Sam, and Samson said to them, this time I shall be blameless regarding the Philistines if I harm them. Samson takes one thing out of this. I'm going to beat them up, and I'm, going to be, I'm not going to be at fault. I'm going to hurt them. I'm going to make them pay, and I won't be at fault. That's what he takes out of that. You know what the problem with being a selfish person? Anyone know what that is? Everything's all about you, and you always and you always have the right to inflict pain on other people. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> the selfish person always thinks that they are in the right when they stab someone in the back or when they say mean things about someone or when they attack someone. So Samson is... Uh, he doesn't, you know, he uh, doesn't take this, this young woman to be his, his new wife. No, he just, this is, I'm taking this as an excuse. I'm going to beat them up. I'm going to make them pay. I'm going to hurt them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make them pay for this. Now, that's what he, he is supposed to be leading, leading Israel to rebel against the Philistines, right? Yeah. He's not doing that. He's fighting, the only reason he's fighting against the Philistines is because they made him mad. But still, he's not doing it for the right reason. He won't be blessed by God because of this, but God is still manipulating circumstances so that Samson does what he's supposed to do, isn't he? Yeah. Because God is still in control no matter what you choose to do. Understand that. Yeah, that's true. God is on the throne, and you are going to get to where he has you going, whether it's kicking and screaming or walking the road as a friend of God. It's your choice how you reach that goal. But you're going to reach that goal one way or the other. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes. Think about how much effort he's willing to put into getting revenge. Imagine if he applied this work ethic to being a proper judge for Israel. How much time do you think it takes to catch 300 foxes? How much effort do you think that takes? Are foxes docile creatures that just kind of hang out and, oh, you want to catch me? Sure thing. Walk up to you and let you put a leash on them? No, they're not, they're not easy to catch. They put up a fight. When it comes to vengeance, he's willing to put in the effort, but when it comes to doing God's will, he can't be bothered. How many of us are like that? We'll put a lot of effort into the things we enjoy. We'll put a lot of effort into uh, maybe it's uh, sports or video games or our jobs. But when it comes to the things of God, we give God the bare minimum. God should get the best of our lives. He should get the best effort of our life. Why? Because he deserves it. Your job did not die on the cross for your sins. The football players on TV didn't die for your sins. No one else died for your sins but Jesus Christ. He deserves our best effort. It's so sad that Samson will put his best efforts into revenge, but won't put anything into honoring God. Uh, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah. I like him as a basketball player, but I really, yeah. you know, honor God more than I would honor yeah. God. It's very important we honor God above all. Yeah, that's 
and ask yourself, do I put as much effort into my relationship with God as I put into other things in my life? Am I as dedicated to God as I am to my passion, my other passions in life? Samson was so dedicated to his revenge, but couldn't lift a finger to do what God wanted him to do, unless, unless it just happened to be accomplished by his revenge. So he caught 300 foxes, and he took torches turn the fox's tail to tail and put a torch between each pair of tails. This was an incredibly intricate thing that he's doing. This took a lot of work. This is not the work of an idiot. This is, he put a lot of hard work into this. When he had set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain as well as the vineyards and olive groves. So, why is this such a big deal? Burning up their grain and their and their, and their corn and their uh, their grain and their vineyards and their olive groves. Why is this such a big deal? To burn up all their food and their vineyards and their olive groves. How are they going to eat? How are they going to make a living? This is really weakening the Philistines in this area. It's going to devastate their, e their economy. People aren't going to have money for basic goods. They're not going to have food first off and they're not going to, have, they're not going to be able to sell anything to go buy food from somewhere else. Yeah. In his vengeance, he actually struck a very strategic blow against the Philistines. In his vengeance. Imagine if he applied that effort to being a judge, right? Philistines would have already been beat if he had applied that effort, right? Yeah. So this is a horrible blow to the Philistines. You can't fight if you don't have food. You can't live if you don't have food. You starve to death. All that food, their vineyards, their olive groves, burn. Then the Philistines said, who, have, who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. By the way, they, fam, his uh, wife's family, his wife and his wife's family were burned alive in retaliation for this. Did Samson care? Because Samson is a selfish person. Be careful about putting too much trust in selfish people. Samson didn't care. It's not rocket science to think that there'd be retaliation. Yeah. But Samson didn't care. There's no effort to protect them. There's also a lesson that you see back in the last chapter. Samson's wife was afraid of her family being burned alive. That's why she tricked Samson. What ended up happening anyway? She got burned alive. Yeah. Wouldn't it have been better if she just told Samson what was going on? Yeah, yeah. That, that would have been better. Samson would have, under those circumstances, protected her. But she was fearful, and all Samson was was a good-looking partier. He hadn't showed any any reason yet that he could take on all the Philistines, so she was fearful, and she lied and tricked him out of fear. Giving in to fear doesn't help, does it? No, it doesn't. She acted out of fear and ended up getting exactly what she was trying to avoid. Ask yourself today, do I live in fear? There are a lot of people who live in fear. This world is built on fear. How many people go around in fear thinking the world's going to end in 10 years because of climate change? The Bible doesn't say that, does it? No. The world will end when God decides it's going to end. That's true. And if you look at the Bible, we've got a minimum. If, if the final seven-year period begins today, we've got at least 1,007 years. If, if, the, if the final seven-year period described in Revelation begins today, you got that seven years and then the thousand year reign of Christ on the earth. Don't give in to fear. That's 
True. These people saying, oh, the world's going to burn up. We don't have much time. we got to do this, this, and this. No, what we need to do is reach people with the kingdom yeah. of God. It's not climate change we need to worry about. It's sin we need to worry right. about. Right. We need to walk in fellowship with the Lord. We need to tell people about Jesus. Right. Because that is the eminent threat. Yeah. Fear usually leads us into trouble. Yeah. When you act in fear, it usually leads you into ruin. Sometimes leads you into the exact thing you're trying to avoid. Her fear, her acting in fear ended up leading her and her family to the same death that she was trying to avoid. And Samson, because he's a selfish person, yes, had she gone to him earlier, he would have protected her, not because he's a good guy, but he would have protected her because that's my wife, no one's going to mess with her. It would have been out of pride he would have protected her, but he would have protected her nonetheless, wouldn't he have? Yeah. But because Samson's a prideful man and a selfish man, he has no use of them anymore, so he doesn't do anything to protect them. Be careful who you trust in this world. Don't trust selfish people. When someone proves himself to be a selfish man or woman, you pray for them, you try to be a blessing to them, but you don't trust them. Yeah. A selfish person, a selfish man or woman, will always make you pay for any trust you put in them. The best thing that could have happened to this family would have been if she would have, if her father would have never given her to Samson. That would have, could have, would have been the best thing that could have happened. But because that happened, because they got involved with a selfish man, their family was burned to death. And that's what selfish people do. They always end up coming back to bite the people they get involved with. Be careful about dealing with selfish individuals. If someone can always make, make themselves a victim in every situation, that's a red flag. Be careful who you deal with. Samson said to them, since you would do a thing like this, I will surely take revenge on you, and after that I will cease. So, Samson doesn't do a thing to help them, but you know what he is going to do? Use it as an excuse mm. to attack the Philistines again, isn't he? Yeah. He's going to once again use this as an excuse to attack them. Mm. Because Samson is a selfish man. He didn't do a thing to help them, but his pride has to be satisfied, doesn't it? Yeah. His pride has to be satisfied. They attacked them because of me, so I have to get back at them because I'm going to look weak if I don't do anything. He's got to take revenge. So he attacked them, hip and thigh, with a great slaughter. Then he went down and dwelt in the cleft of the rock of Edom. So Samson is a mighty man. And he, he, he crushes these Philistines. Note, his motives are never good in any of this. But... What is he doing? He is really doing significant damage to the Philistines, isn't he? Yeah. That's who he's supposed to be waging war against. He's not doing it God's way, but God has a plan, and there's nothing Samson can do to change that plan. The problem for Samson is because of the way he's doing it, he's making his own life miserable. He's piling up problem after problem after problem, sin after sin after sin in his life. And as we've covered over and over again, what do I keep saying about sin? The bill always what? Come due. The bill always comes due. You will never get away with sin forever. It will always catch up to you. Yeah, that's true. And Samson just keeps piling it up, piling it up, mm. piling it up. So yeah, he's still accomplishing God's goal, but not in a way that's going to lead to a happy ending for him, is he? No. Now the Philistines went up and camped in Judah and deployed themselves against Lehi. So the, the Philistines, after Samson slaughtered all those people, decided, well, we're not going to go directly after him. We're going to go after other, we're going to go after his countrymen. Hmm. We're, going to, we're going to go after them instead. <clears throat> 
Now the men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? So they answered, We have come up to arrest Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Edom and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this you have, do what is this you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. Now a few things. This, these 3,000 men of Judah, they're, they're going to arrest Samson and hand him over to the Philistines. You know what these 3,000 men should be doing? They should be Samson's army, right? Yeah. Samson's supposed to be the judge. But because he won't do what he's supposed to do God's way, he's just making it harder for himself. So these men are coming to arrest him, the men who should be following him. That's true. Samson's reply when they come, as they did to me, so I have done to them. They did it first! Like a little kid, right? Yeah. They did, you do something wrong. But, 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 Joe did that to me. Yeah, Samson, he's a spoiled brat. Yeah. It's all about doing what he feels like doing. He doesn't care who suffers. Mm. He didn't, doesn't really care that his wife's family was murdered. He just saw it as a great excuse to get revenge and show that he's a big guy, right? Yeah. And he didn't think about what would happen to uh, the Israelites that he's supposed to be leading. He didn't care. Mm -hmm. But they said to him, We have come down to arrest you that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. So they spoke to him, saying, No, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hand, but we will surely not kill you. And they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. So they, he was going to let them arrest him. Is it because he's planning on living out his life as a Philistine prisoner? No. no. It's because Samson has incredible strength. He will, is happy to be delivered to the Philistines, isn't he? Yeah. That's right. Send me right to him. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and killed a thousand men with it. So one man against a thousand Philistines, an army, Samson wins. Imagine this guy was doing things the right way, leading yeah. Israel. If he could do all this by himself, imagine what he could do with the Israelites united behind him as judge. Yeah. The Philistines would be, would be under their yoke before long, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they would. But Samson has to have a a macho, I need vengeance reason to do any of this. But nonetheless, God's plan is getting fulfilled through Samson, just not the way it could have been, not in a way that's good for Samson. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. And so it was, when he had finished speaking, he threw the jawbone from his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. Then, then he became very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall the hand of the uncircumcised? Okay, how dare he get upset at God right now? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, God did give him a good victory, but what has Samson done? Has Samson even <coughs> tried to follow God this whole time? No. no. I hope and pray that we don't have this attitude towards God, that we're just going to do what we want to do and then go angrily to him. Why are you letting this happen, God? Sometimes we need to look in a mirror and say, why am I doing this to myself? That's what amen. we need to do, amen? Amen, yeah. Yeah, you're right. There. God takes care of us. He provides for us. He protects us. He's... Yeah. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Yeah, yeah, he did. Even if he doesn't do a single thing for you for the rest of your life, he's already done more than we deserve. Amen? Amen. Oh, that's true. 
The next time you find yourself shaking a fist at God and saying, why are you letting this happen, God? Instead, you need to look in a mirror and say, why am I sabotaging my life? That's true. What decisions am I making that are getting me here? Oh, how often I'll hear people who are making, who are doing things that they know are wrong. The Bible is very clear it's wrong. They've read enough of the Bible to know it's wrong. And then they're complaining, God, why are you letting this happen? God's not letting this happen. You chose to rebel against God. And now you're facing the consequences. Samson has been going out, has been on a killing spree. He's been going out fighting Philistines over and over again. He started doing this because he's on a vengeance kick, right? Yeah. He didn't think about his needs for food or water, did he? No. He just been going out doing what he felt like doing. And now, yeah. after all this, he's thirsty. Because you know what? If you go long enough without drinking, you're going to get thirsty. That's true. Yeah. You know, when I go to work, I spend sometimes hours in a day away from home. I always have myself food, you know, whatever meals I'm going to have, whatever drinks I have, i am got them all packed in a cooler. Yeah. I prepare accordingly because I know I'm going to be gone for a long time. That's true. Yeah. It's Samson's fault he wasn't, he didn't try to prepare. He should have brought provisions. Yeah. Or maybe he should say, well, you know what? Of course I'm thirsty after all this. I need to go look for some water. Instead, yeah. he's pointing the finger at God. Luckily for Samson, God has a plan for Samson, and Amen. Samson is still going to achieve that plan no matter how much of a jerk Samson is. Amen? Amen? So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out, and he drank. And his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore he called its name en Hakor, which is in Lehi to this day. So you know what we don't see here? Yes, we never see a thank you to God, do we? Mm, no. no. He's willing to shake his fist at God and blame God, but when God provides for him, you don't see any praise, do you? No. And he judged Israel 20 years in the days of the Philistines. So at this point, Samson does take the leadership of Israel. He judged them in the days of the Philistines. You know what that means? I don't know. He, didn't drive them out. he didn't drive them out. He's leading Israel, but he's not taking the fight to the Philistines and delivering Israel from the Philistines. I'm sure the Philistines are afraid to come and uh, push Israel around, but they're still there waiting for the opportunity. What's Samson supposed to do? Yes, he's the judge. He's supposed to drive the Philistines out so that Israel can have peace. Amen. Not instead for Israel to know, well, the Philistines aren't attacking, but I can see them on the border there. They're ready to move in at a moment's notice. Israel should have peace, not be wondering when the, nec when the, when the next uh, problem's going to happen. Yeah. But Samson isn't willing to do his job. Yes, he's finally leading Israel, but he's not actually accomplishing anything. We know just from what he did by himself. Yeah. That could the Philistines have stood against him if he took that army and marched in? If a thousand Philistines can't beat him by the can't can't just beat Samson by himself, what could the Philistines do if Samson marched in, leading Israel's forces? They'd be defeated, right? The Philistines would be done for. They'd have to leave Israel. Israel would be free. Yeah, that's true. But once again, even when Samson finally takes, finally accepts the role as judge, he doesn't do anything with it. Time and time again, God has given Samson opportunity to do what he needs to do. Yeah, that's true. The thing is, God is still going to accomplish his purpose. Yeah. Samson has, has 20 years to do it God's way. But he doesn't do it here, does he? No. What are things that maybe God wants you to do today that maybe you're choosing not to do? Ask yourself, is there something God wants me to do right now that I'm choosing not to do that I don't want to do because I think it's going to be too hard or too inconvenient? 
Understand this, if God wants you to do something, you need to do it. Amen. Even if it's going to be hard, even if it's going to be inconvenient, God's will will still happen. The question is, how is your part in that going to play out? I'd rather walk down that road in fellowship with God Amen. than to be dragged kicking and screaming down that road. Amen? Amen. You know, our lives are planned out by God. God knows there's a time I'm going to die. I can choose, though, whether I die having walked in fellowship with God or whether I die in misery and in bitterness and in strife. I can choose that. Yeah, that's true. I can choose whether I show up every day and do what God wants me to do or whether I do what I want to do and make a mess of my life. I can choose that. You all have a choice. God's plan is still going to go forward. None of us have the ability to, to take a look at God's sovereign plan and in our pride say, no, God, you can't do that. None of us have that ability. No, that's true. God is God and he's on the throne. The question is, are you going to go along with him? Or are you going to be like Samson and make a mess of your life? 20 years he had to do things the right way. but he doesn't do it. Mm. Let that not be said of you or of me. Amen. Larry, he had plenty of time to do what God wanted him to do, but he wasted his time. Let that not be said of us, amen? amen. That's true. Yeah. Choose God's way. Amen. Choose fellowship with the Lord because God will have his will whether we like it or not, amen? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your love for us, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for living for us, Lord. Help us to be obedient to you. Your plan is not going to be defeated by our rebellion, Lord. But Lord, the quality of our life is affected by whether we choose to have fellowship with you or whether we choose to reject you. We can reject you and have the best the world has to offer, and it will not bring satisfaction. We can follow you and go through difficult situations, but if we're going through those difficult situations with you, we can have peace. So, Lord, help us to make the right decisions, Lord. Help us to trust you. Help us to walk in fellowship with you. Help us to take you at your word, I pray, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hello, I'm Pastor Larry Evans, and you've been watching a New Life Church video. If it has been a blessing, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on it. We'd love to hear from you. Our website is www.newlifenwin.org and has our schedule as well as more information about us. God bless.